Hello, everyone. I do think we are live now. And uh, yeah, uh, here is the unanimous uh, discussion group, and we're going to have the after church tea time to discuss uh, the Ben Paco's uh, sermon, which was a really nice sermon. Yeah, and uh, we are Laurentio Alexandra, and yet again. And we are joined today uh, by beautiful unionists. You can present yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm Sandra. Thank you, Sam. I'm Kayla. Yeah. And uh, yeah, today's topic uh, is about uh, fulfilling your purpose, fulfilling your function. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's go deeper uh, mm. uh, into like what Paco and Deb shared. And um, yeah, if you have like any insights or anything that, you know, came up, um, for you after listening to this sermon or something that um, really struck a chord within you. No? Can be no. like your life purpose. Mm -hmm. That you feel passionate about and you want it, you want to do it. Yeah. I think um, <clears throat> for me, like this sermon is very helpful because it's something that we're um, just working on in our life. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, like the, I, I liked how, um, I think you guys even talked about it in the intro, that when you look back on your life, the times that you're the most happiest is when you are fulfilling your function. And it's like, yeah, like I definitely resonate with that. And um, I, I, yeah, like I resonate with it a lot. Yeah, yeah I think it was a very beautiful sermon today. Um, <clears throat> yeah, talking about that, about looking back in your life and seeing how you were the happiest. Um, I was meditating on that where watching the sermon and I realized that it's only when you're on purpose that you can be happy. Maybe something should try to be happy otherwise, but mm -hmm. it's not lasting. You know, you get tired, you get bored, or depressed, or depressed. Um, yeah, and you need to come back to it and like leave your life purpose completely in everything that you are doing. So yeah, I think this was uh, perfect because we are working on a lot of stuff in our life about going deeper in life purpose, in serving God, in serving the community, and finding our joy in our life and in our work every day. Mm -hmm. beautiful yeah that's beautiful and we're working to like the same thing and I was like laughing yesterday when we had like the class with Jeff and Shalina and we got to be like disciplined on this and I was like I know the sermon that's going to come tomorrow isn't it funny we were like laughing about it so um yeah we're also like going deeper with this because um we received like a very important piece for ourselves like in our own healing um yesterday in the class with Jeff and Shinya and we have been like just um kind of like meditating on that and and choosing to go deeper and to um choose to have more um how to say just to go just go deeper with our purpose and fulfilling like our function and I um I really love that it is related to you know really just accepting being happy right now and I think that this is beautiful that we might have, you know, like blocks or resistance to us, like doing our function. However, I'm just seeing how um, kind of combined with this sermon is just like a resistance to truly be happy because I realized that if you were to just live and fulfill your function and do your purpose, you would be the happiest. You'd have like no, no worry. You'd be like over the moon um, all the time in like, being with God and, you know, having like that deep and personal relationship with God that you can just um, fulfill your function all the time. Like it, it, and again, this is not about like a certain activity that you're doing. It is about your life purpose, right? And what you have to like, what's like your, um, kind of like what's your function in, in the kingdom of heaven. Um, however, it's also like about like your whole life, like your whole life is not separate from that purpose. Um, and I really love that uh, about what the Paco and Deb shared. It's about it can change, it can grow depending what you do, depending on the day. Um, maybe today you, your function is to, you know, go out and have a coffee and on your way you 
um, you know, maybe speak with a, with a stranger, you help an old lady to cross the street, you know, well, that's part of the function that, you know, God intended for you today. And it looks different than, you know, now sitting down and, um, you know, doing this after church tea time. It's a constant flow with God. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I feel like, you know, another thing here, like in fulfilling your function, what I feel it's like, if you were to really like fulfill your function in every moment, you wouldn't really have financial problems anymore. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's another thing that I got from this. It's like really like seeing that fulfilling your function is really essential to be able to just uh, have everything in your life. Yeah, because it's like a, it's a relationship that you have with God. And right? so therefore, if fulfilling your function gives to God, you being on purpose is the way that you love God back. So therefore, when you love God back, God, of course, will feel um, much more ease in giving back to you as well in a form of like, not just like finances, but everything in your life would grow and expand. Yeah, I love that. Mm, yeah, God loves talking to you. Just be open and to feel God. Whatever you give, God gives back to you. There's always a really wonderful, wonderful, juicy feeling inside of you in your heart when you're doing good and you're actually out there and you're loving people and you're helping people. That's part of your function too. Yeah, and I think that it's um, <clears throat> important that like you surrender what you think your function is because mm -hmm. that's something that I have always, you know, like I guess growing up, um, my thing when I was younger was that I was gonna be an author and I was very attached to that. And like, uh, that's, I don't think that's really my function, you know, and like as I grew older and like got to know myself and started my spiritual journey, I realized like what I'm actually called to do is something really different. Mm -hmm. And you have to be really like willing to surrender that because, uh, that's what will make you happy. Not what you think you are, who you think you are, what you think you're supposed to be doing. It's how God created you. So yeah, it's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I love that. I remember I was during all my life, I was just chasing something different than my purposes, maybe part of my purpose. Um, since starting the spiritual journey, I remember like taking a different path and my life purpose being revealed to me and knocking in my door. So it is, it is impossible to escape when you are taking the twin flame journey, I guess. It's going to come to you. You need to work on that, on your life purpose. And like you were discussing, um, <clears throat> it always feels good when you're on the flow. And everything gets, everything works for you when you are in that uh, position. And I think this is something that everyone works through constantly is um, have more discipline with ourselves to see where we are getting out of the flow. Maybe you are feeling good all day and then, oops, now I feel bad. What happened? Why are you not flowing anymore? Why are you maybe tired or feeling resistant to it? To look in all those places. And that is what helps you to you know, go deeper and to grow more and to expand. It's okay to look there and to have discipline. Like, okay, let's realign here. Let's realign and not feel guilty about it. Just yeah i love that you know and when you you realign you can easily kind of get back into okay what's the activity or how that looks like because you're in that state of peace and in that state of peace you can um, connect back to god and in connecting back to god we can you can like communicate and then and ask okay god what's the next step here what do you want me to do how should i serve you uh in this moment right now and uh you know having that communication with god is like really really important and i really loved about what you shared michael about like not having attachment to, about how that looks like and that's um not just like about like your whole life path but like day-to-day -day activities as well I um one of the life purpose classes I, I watched lately, um, Jeff was sharing a story about how he needed to like um write something for like uh, Twin Flames Universe, like some sales copy that he had to do, but he never felt guided to do that. And instead guide uh, God guided him to like um write a, a zombie book. The zombie book winner. Like for those of you who watch Life Purpose Class and three from Essential School, you might know it. Uh, if not, we we recommend uh, 
watching Life Purpose class and doing Frame Extension School. If you're not uh, uh, and subscribe or like, you know, yeah, if you don't know what we're talking about, right? But we're gonna give you a little piece here. So, um, God guided like Jeff to like write his book, and at first he didn't really like understand why, you know, because the most logical and appropriate thing to do would be to you know sort out this thing in like the business to kind of you know grow uh, but uh after he kind of like surrendered then went deeper and started writing more and more uh he realized that the lesson that god had for him there was to kind of to gain confidence in his writing and be able to like express a feeling or like a a, a vivid emotion uh in writing and of course that's you know very important when you you write like anything you transmit a, a message an energy a vibration so he god was just helping him like refine in that area so he could write the, the perfect um you know the perfect thing then and i really love that i really love uh um the fact that when you're connecting with god and choosing to be on purpose it it flows, it looks different, it's unexpected. And uh, part of surrendering is that maybe you don't know why sometimes God guides you to do something. Uh, you don't know why God is asking you to go in a certain direction, but by surrendering and having faith and trusting, it's um, it's going to be revealed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, this reminds me like, you know, with, with us when, we were uh, at the beginning of this community when we uh, when we came at the beginning, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was just like we wanted to, okay, let's go with ascension coaching, let's be ascension coaches for that purpose. And then we were like, okay, maybe you know that we took a break from that and like, okay, now let's make video games, we'll try that and fully work. And like, okay, maybe it doesn't work right now. So then let's go become ascension coaches again. <laughs> And yeah. then we become essentially this time like we actually finished it mm -hmm. and then afterwards we're like okay divine gaming let's let's make video games as well now <laughs> so it's it was a process of non-attachment but at the same time not be attached to like doing something but not be attached to not doing something as well mm -hmm. and i feel here something um i still see you, michaela do, making a book at some point i don't know about what but who knows uh, so don't be attached not be an author <laughs> <laughs> who knows you know the who thing knows? is that if you have like a desire in your heart you know nurture it and maybe at some point it will come to be in one way or another that's true i mean i do desire to write a book one day just not now but yeah. i think what i realize is like i appreciate the um <clears throat> like the order of importance mm -hmm. and like you know ascension coaching for you guys and for us and for many coaches is like the foundation yeah. mm -hmm. that will open the door to the next piece mm -hmm. and you have a similar story with engineering you yeah know, like it's something that i also loved and i tried to you know start doing that but it didn't work um god guided me to you know do the healing path and to focus on ascension coaching and that is still there. It's something that I enjoy. Well, you're still finished. And I'm finishing my league of guiding me to finish it. And I don't know why. I don't know what is the purpose of it in the future, but I know there is something there. So yeah, it's important to be unattached and just do whatever God is guiding you. And maybe you don't understand it this month, but in one year, I said, ah, okay, now it makes sense. Why I did this training, why I uh, went through this. I remember when I started <clears throat> doing volunteer work in the charts. I just started doing video editing and it was like, I will never use it. I will never do this, but let's do it. And after that, it was useful. Mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot and I was like, wow, never say it's no. Skill. Yeah, it's about the skill to have. And that resistance that you have at the beginning is maybe because you don't know yourself and you don't know you know, you don't know the reason that God is presenting it, but it's safe to be humble and to, okay, let's take it. Let's love it fully. And a lot of blessings came out of that experience and every experience and a lot of knowledge and, yeah, ability to create the next level of things in your life purpose. They're teaching me as a volunteer to love everything that I do. Just give it all your love. And that's what I see with you. you. Did you say you might go back into engineering? You could do it with love. So much love. 
Well, at least you'll have a degree. <laughs> like, yeah. That's yeah. all. No, yeah. like that'll be there. But yeah. yeah, it's true. That's the whole point of like your purpose is just to love in whatever way you're called to love. And that's what makes you happy. Mm-hmm. And if you're not like loving completely, then you're not going to be happy completely. And at a certain point, like I think this is a lesson that we're learning in the community is like at a certain point, you just get really tired of not being happy and resisting yeah. that happiness. Like you were saying, Alexandra, that feels very bad. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, um, A Course in Miracles talks about it, uh, that the reason why the ego really mm-hmm. gets you to like, it really holds on and doesn't want you to give your gift is because it knows that once you start really truly giving, the ego will die. And so it doesn't want that. And so that's why there's so much resistance around work and giving, Mm -hmm. but it's okay to overcome that. Cause I know anytime that I feel resistant to whatever it is I need to be doing, it's the resistance that actually feels bad. And then when you start doing it, you're like, Oh, thank God, this feels so much better. I don't know why I was resisting it. So yeah. Yeah. Discipline. I think it says something also like you're afraid to give, but once you start giving, you realize that you are receiving back. And then you like it, and then you continue doing it. And that is a trap of people. Don't do it. And that's why you are trapped. You don't receive anything. It's like being in a cage. But once you start giving, you start receiving and you start engaging with God. And you're going to like that. And the ego is going to fade away. So it is always a good thing to work on that. Yep. I just, I just want to share off topic a bit, but I could totally see Jose doing like a, your house full of like internet of things kind of situation. With oh yeah, you. I'm planning that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, wow. Yeah. Full automation of everything. Uh, I mean, to be honest, you know, I had an image like earlier when we talked and I saw like, I want to say about your home, but you're making uh, drones with uh, screens to just people to watch on the street, uh, Church of Union. Oh <laughs> <God>. <laughs> You know, every Sunday service, your drones go to work and just like they sit in front of someone with, I don't know, one meter or something. So they could. Yeah, it's funny. Video, your video editing skills combined with engineering. Mm-hmm. That's Let's like, see what yeah, there's like drones. possibilities. Yeah, mm-hmm. drones. Yeah. <laughs> you can do anything. You know, that's the thing. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, anyway, like, I want to ask, like, are there any comments? Oh. So um just like uh, people saying hello lisi says pink is your color sandra she likes you look nice and mm-hmm. then just people saying hello grando lisi and brianne but no comments uh, no questions or anything like that mm-hmm. yeah true. good good i wanted to say something but i forgot <laughs> it's okay i'm gonna ground, ground back we had like a little haha moment um I know you said something very deep, Jose. So we just need a moment to, yeah. to ground it. To ground it. Yeah. Let the message sink in. Mm-hmm. Well, I had something too. But you I, don't know, okay. laughing, I but think I had it. Okay, maybe you have something. Yeah, I want to yeah. tell, like, talking about this, you know, it looked random in the discussion to set out all of these things that you can combine. And this is something that I have been learning recently and having this insight about how uh, having knowledge is fun. <clears throat> you know, like the more you study your career, is the more you are going to enjoy it. You know, getting the best at what you are doing and getting knowledge about every little aspect of your career, like knowing everything, knowing all the components, all mm-hmm. the things. This is something that I really enjoy about purpose is getting good at all of the little things, like perfection in that. And in that you can grow a lot. You can grow a lot in like purpose, feels fun, because you are getting good at it. You are creating something you're doing, loving completely. And that is the thing that feels so good. Like you are not holding back and you're creating something amazing mm-hmm. or learning something amazing, developing your consciousness. And all of these ideas that maybe now they look a bit random or you don't understand yet, keep learning and maybe at one point, the idea is going to, oh, okay, now I can put the pieces together. And before I, I cool them because I didn't have the entire picture. But God is showing you the entire picture, piece by piece. Your only job is to put them in place and see what happens. And let it unfold. It's a fun process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like the zombie story. Mm-hmm. And the sales copy, they seem unrelated, but they're totally related. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, and that actually reminds me that something I was gonna say earlier is that you know living your function is what brings you happiness, and sometimes you will find that you know your function is something that you're not, you know, you really have to grow into. Mm -hmm. You know, like you realize like God has this vision for you, and maybe you've seen yourself all your life, and this is something Deb and Paco talked about, like you've seen yourself as maybe small, or that's mm -hmm. what society has taught you. So all of a sudden, God shows you this really like beautiful dream. And so there's always that voice in your head that's telling you not to pursue it, that it's too much for you, you can't mm -hmm. do it. And that's a voice not to listen to, you yeah. know, and that like your function is probably going to call you to like expand beyond, well, it'll definitely call you to expand beyond your comfort zone, mm -hmm. but it's safe to do that. There's literally nothing you can't do, you know, and I think that's something I've had to overcome is like, if I desire it, I can do it. Even if it's something like, you know, I have to change the way I see myself or develop new skills, mm -hmm. yeah, or do like research and education and training, like all these things. But yeah, like if God tells you to do it, you can do it. And that's what's going to bring you joy. And avoiding mm -hmm. that is what creates like misery and suffering. Mm -hmm. So it's better just to, to dive in and do your best. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was you can say just like, Take baby steps to reach your goal and it'll make you feel really good. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can break up like your view. Uh, I had a like a romance analysis reading from Shalia years ago, and she said something that is really helpful is to develop a pattern of success in your life by breaking up a big goal into small little goals mm -hmm. and you know, following through, and then you build confidence that way. You mm -hmm. yeah, you you create like success. Mentality. yeah success mentality so, yeah yeah and so, so it's like the lowest hanging fruit principle because if you look at the whole mountain and you're like oh my god how i'm gonna like you know go over the mountain of course it's gonna feel overwhelming but if you just think okay i have to just take this next step forward and the next step forward you're gonna get into a flow and it's gonna become easier uh, easier and easier even if like the steps maybe become larger or more complicated you're gonna uh, build that confidence with yourself as well so just lower lowest hanging fruit principle again from my purpose class also helps with that and um yeah it's really useful to allow you to like really build towards that place where you 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 can do more than maybe you can see yourself doing right now mm -hmm. I think like all of us that have been in the work and starting like life purpose class, if we were to look back, like before we started, we have grown in like ways that we cannot even like, um, we couldn't have imagined. And at least that's how I feel about myself when I look like at myself like now versus like when I, before I started like um, learning from Jeff and Sharia, like into implementation school and life purpose class, it's like the level of growth and change that I have gone through. It's so great that I myself wouldn't have imagined that years back. So true. And that's, uh, we actually have a question that I think is like related. Um, and Natalie is asking, how do you know it's God guiding you versus something else? I feel this may be an interesting topic to get clear on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like here it's about first of all, you have to get clear on it. You have to really feel into it. You have to work through any blocks or really question it. Like why it's, why do you desire to do that? What's what's the purpose of that? Explore that. Explore that within yourself. Find the purpose. Find you know, like the, the good feeling that if there is a good feeling about doing it, there's not a good feeling, then why should you do it? In the first place, if he doesn't, well, you serve. might have resistance to like. Yeah, but I mean, purpose. after he healed. Oh, okay, after he healed. Yeah, after he healed, just following that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you have resistance, yeah, like definitely. I think gonna... it's just going through the healing and arriving at the place of peace. And when you're in peace, you're gonna have a next piece of clarity. And maybe the next piece of clarity is you need to do more healing yeah. to find out what the thing is, and that's okay. I think like. Um, it's a process of discovering your purpose as well of discovering if this comes from god or not and you can always um also 
look at somebody who has like a higher understanding of God and see, you know, how they live their life, how they live their purpose. You know, this is why, for example, life purpose class and three frame ascension schools are so important in our life is because Jeff and Shijia know God better than we do. Uh, this is, and this is what they're teaching just through, through the classes, through their way of being. So get to know um, them to see how, how it looks like to have like a closer relationship with God, because ultimately I feel it's all about building that relationship with God yourself. And you have access to God within yourself, but you maybe have blocks. So that we have to see, okay, how, how does somebody that's close to God interact with God? How does that look like? God will never tell you to jump off a cliff, right? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I have another piece here that you can move. So uh, another thing here is if you feel uncomfortable about you know your purpose, doesn't mean it's not your purpose. It's mm -hmm. okay to stay in that uncomfortable space and move through it and not make a choice out of like a space where you feel bad. Because, Avoiding the, the yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah, because it can feel uncomfortable, but that may be the, your next step. Like we mm -hmm. learned this, and that it's safe to just sit in the. Uh, you know, like uncomfortable and feel through it, move through it. No, don't uh, don't hold on to it, but don't avoid it. Yeah. yeah, I think it's also like on. Yeah, it's like being willing to see the truth. You know, like being willing to like not hold on to a fantasy about yourself. You know, like yeah. um, that's really common. And some sometimes people think that they're one thing, and that's actually not how they're designed. But they feel that that thing gives them like some sort of I don't know, value. It's like, you know, you have to just be willing to hear God's voice and like yeah. be open to what he shows you about who you are. Cause that's really is, it's going to make you happy. You know, it's not about anything else, but just being happy. And yeah. like for you, when we were getting clear on your degree, like Jose let it go. He was like, I'm not going to finish it. Like, I don't have time. Yeah, I completely we, we, did, we just can't do it right now. And then it just didn't feel good. You know? Yeah. It feels good in the moment because yeah. what it was, um, what I was feeling there is like, that was the way that I was raised, that if I didn't have that, I didn't have any value. My life didn't have any value. And that was feeling so heavy on me. That's the reason that finishing it was feeling so bad to me. So I came to a place of peace and let it go completely. I was like, I'm not doing this. And I was feeling so good in that moment. And after processing that experience and letting everything go, God was, sending me signs everywhere like look at this yeah um miraculously they didn't come for me when they should have because yeah. i left it i was like oh wow i'm still here i there is a purpose and i find a way i found a way to finish it fast and to do it in the most easy way ever and <clears throat> when i started it again it was feeling completely different because i wasn't doing it for the validation of others I was doing for myself and I was doing for having that knowledge and that experience and to grow, not out of obligation. So I need to totally surrender it. And then God gave it a new life, <clears throat> a better life to it and a better purpose. So yeah, completely surrender everything. Yeah. Mm. That's like how Jeff and Shelley teach you to, you to go all in with something yeah. and fully explore it, you mm -hmm. know, and that's when you get the clarity about it. It's yeah. not through control, it's through surrender and just being willing to see the truth mm -hmm. and not like wanting to control how it looks or what you think it should look like. And yeah, just surrender. Yeah. I remember I was very upset. I was like, God, you made me do this for some years and now I'm letting it go. Like what? Why? <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't understand why, but I came to that point of like, if you want this, I'm fine. Like if it's the best for me, I'm fine with it. And then when it, I made peace with the, the way back up here, I was like, oh, okay. Looks like when I love fully the situation, I find the clarity. And this is why even, you know, if at this point in you to something that you don't understand, it is safe to trust and stay and yeah, know that God knows better and knows the way to do it. Because the way that I was doing it before was miserable, was very heavy. And after letting all of that go, the new way of, just finishing it and completing that feels good, feels light and with some purpose. So yeah, good learning experience. Yeah, like the, this kind of 
like reminding me of like uh, even with uh, Alexandra letting off her uh, her job, she had a hard time to to let mm-hmm. go. Like when we come to the point to just switch to just being essential coaches and going deeper with divine gaming, because Alexandra was feeling the same. Like God, you made me like do the university, just like work and like what now? Yeah, but Alexandra, you learn like programming and mm-hmm. right, like that's what you're doing. So it's all, it's like perfect. Yeah, it's the same. I think like by the point that I had to let go of my job, like I was pretty clear, you know, like uh, like I, nothing was lost. And I think yeah. this is something that I really love. And it, it was something that it said like at first, like in the very first classes of life purpose class, whatever you have learned, whatever skill you have learned in your life, it's never lost. It's used in your purpose. Um, in in one way or another um, even if maybe you don't see how right now so by the time like I had to let go of my job I was very clear but when we were kind of um, oscillating between like being ascension coaches and doing video games we had this this conversation it's like it doesn't fully feel good for me to be like a full ascension coach it's like let go of this completely because then what my degree is useless like all this experience I have like working in an IT company it's useless so therefore that didn't feel good for me at the same time it wasn't that we're gonna do only video games because then Laurentius spiritual studies and everything that he learned would be useless so it, we were kind of like in this predicament of like how we we merge these but we're doing both right this is it with uh, your uh, purpose you can do both <laughs> you can do ev- everything that you you feel like you're called to of course like respecting as you said Michaela the order and what's like the most important thing for you to do right now um yeah the most important thing for me right now is not to be a rock star, even if probably I would want. I don't know. <laughs> Just joking. But yeah, as an example, if I had that desire, still got to grow into it. Um, yeah, any knowledge that we've accumulated throughout the years, when you release it and let go of it, it can be repurposed and God will find a new way for you to use that. So we always have to be open, open to that. Completely agree. And I also want to share a comment that Lucy made. She said, I resonate with what you shared, Jose and Michaela. I could only see that I wasn't giving because I was feeling bad. Then when I started to just let go and give, I started feeling better. I'm laughing more, having a lot of fun and loving. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is what you do. Sometimes you are maybe feeling heavy and then you start working and it passes. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I feel heavy, but I have work now. And then you start working and you're having a good time and that goes away. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, ah, I was good. Yeah. I was very nice. Yeah. I'm just being disciplined. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, like uh, with discipline, like it's important to really build a a relationship with yourself or discipline because I know like if you start and just be like okay from tomorrow I start and I just like learn how to like I, I just go and ski but I never skied and kind of like learn to ski I want to learn how to ski like immediately and like push yourself to the extreme that's not sustainable and I, and I love how Jeffrey teaches how to l- discipline ourselves in a sustainable way because that's really important I feel like when it mm-hmm. comes to fulfilling your function they do it in a sustainable way and yeah discipline is very important and learning how to discipline yourself and what actually discipline is is very important because I feel like before being in this community I had a hard time like about discipline what discipline actually was so yeah that's um yeah, what it looks to be disciplined it's, it's love of course like mm-hmm. discipline is a way of, of loving yourself you know and i think like when you're growing and changing and um approaching like maybe new things and going to that resistance it's safe to go like one step at a time and just push through it and push through it you know you're gonna you're gonna uh i think like it's really safe to see that by doing this you're allowing yourself to build something real and sustainable in your life um, it's not about having spurts of growth or like, um, you know, building or burning yourself out. It's about really just disciplining yourself in a sustainable way to push through that uh, resistance. 
and also it'll help you uh, be more grounded when everything is sustainable and you can be more at peace and more happier. And I'm just like bringing me back to the quote that Devin Paco opened with was the purpose of living your function is happiness. So it's, yeah, like, I think that's really important to always remember because the world doesn't teach you to be happy in your work. The world teaches you to like, you know, yeah. do that, what you're talking about, like bleed yourself and your energy out for a lifetime until retirement and then you're completely burnt out mm -hmm. and then that's you know that's the cycle and um I think part of being disciplined in your purpose and it brings you joy is like not doing that retirement you know energy uh just in small ways mm -hmm. because it's like something you know it's like it's just how you use your energy you know like you don't stop giving or you know like it's you just like a flow loving. you don't stop loving mm -hmm. right like you don't love a lot and then not love and love a lot like that's not balanced um so yeah like i think that's part of being disciplined mm -hmm. is being disciplined with your emotional energy and your energy and just knowing what's appropriate which is just you know always being in tune with what what god wants you to do mm -hmm. which is like that lowest hanging fruit and that's something that Paco was talking about. I liked how he shared that he felt like his function in this moment was to uh, clean yeah, their house awesome. and their function in this moment was to feed his family or to go to the grocery store. Like it was the thing that felt the best to him and the most in flow. And if you just live that way, like you will be happy because mm -hmm. you're always going to be doing it, you know, with yeah. God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it'll feel great because you're doing it with God. You, it won't feel like you're being stressed or pressured or anything. You'll feel good. Yeah, yeah and I really like that you, you mentioned that retirement energy because I know this is something that, you know, we have worked through in, um, to kind of release within ourselves and heal. And when you put it in this way, you're like, okay, the... Um, living your life purpose brings you happiness, why would you ever want to retire from your life purpose? It's, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah, retirement doesn't actually make any sense. No, it's, it's yeah. pretty boring. Yeah, it's kind of sad. So, and like, a, and that's how kind of society is set up is that, you know, you have many retirements, like on the weekend, you know, like you work really hard and then, you know, at least in American culture and then and you like, party is. really hard and Spain is very similar. Oh, yeah. Spain likes its parties <laughs> and its holidays and its every yeah, all the festivals. But anyway, that's like a thing, you know, it's like you basically are working just to for the weekend and that's depressing, you know, and that's not how life yeah. is supposed to be. You should be working for God and like that brings you happiness. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. In a way, like they're working to get away from work. Yeah. 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 And then like you have to start work all over again on Monday and you just feel terrible. And it's just like you leak so much energy that way, you know, and it's like many retirements leading up to like the big retirement of your life. And that's just like a very. Yeah. It's like that energy of like I need to save myself from working. When I retire, I will be happy. But then you are not really. You don't have like the purpose in life. I remember Sally asked there was something, I think in this group or in another group about that very like old lady in a ship, like getting oh, lobsters. yeah, she's catching lobsters. Yeah, catching lobsters. Oh, yes. She was so happy. Yeah. She was in purpose, she was just getting the lobsters she's and just... living a fulfilled life. And that's the attitude is do what you like. And if you are doing what you like, why to stop in retirement? You continue doing it and you get deeper. And <laughs> yeah, you work more. Yeah, like I, I really love that uh, video that you're mentioning, and it's, uh, I, I don't know if you remember in it, but uh, she was with uh, her son, and at some point, uh, the reporter asked something, uh, the son, and the question is, like, what do you do when you don't want to, to go, like, what, what do you do when you have a, like, you know, rainy day kind of situation where you don't feel like uh, so, so good? And the mother just came in, he doesn't have a choice. <laughs> and, and basically, like, she had discipline there, like, she didn't care if she's raining, if it's, she doesn't feel good, she'll still do it, because mm -hmm. she knew mm -hmm. that that would make her happy. Even if she didn't feel good in the moment, 
she, it's not that she felt bad because of doing her purpose or like fulfilling her function. It was, mm-hmm. she, she was just moving through some feelings and actually her fulfilling her function would make her happy anyway, like would help her move through those feelings. Yeah. yeah. And this is how, you know, you can live until, you know, 80, 90, 100, you know, uh, years old is that you're filled with that joy for your purpose. And, you know, that keeps you going, right? There's no reason for you to die if you're like producing value to the to the world and you're giving something back and you're going to always receive in kind, you know, and it's always going to, you know, keep you going. And I think that's that's beautiful to, to kind of see in, um, you know, just people exam- that live the life purpose, even if it's like, no matter how it looks like, right? You can be catching lobster or having like your own bakery or, you know, being a doctor, you know, no matter what it is, you know, as long as you live your purpose and move to everything that comes up with it, you're going to live a happy and joyful and fulfilled life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so important to have something important to do, something to contribute to people, to life, to society. Some people, like, they work really hard and then they retire and they have nothing to do. And then they're miserable. They're unhappy. And you know what? Because they didn't find something good to do within themselves. They just go on and die. So they could have lived longer if they had found something good, joyful to do. Yeah, it's true. And I think it's also realizing that your purpose and your function has a lot of value to everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that is super important. If you don't think that what you're doing is valuable and then, you know, you're not going to want to do it or feel good about doing it, but it's, um, you know, like every spirituality and definitely unionism like teaches that it doesn't matter what your function is. It's really important. Like your job is really important. And you know, that's, I like that, that um, woman, the lobster fisher, like she was fishing for lobsters. I don't know if that's the right term, but she was doing lobster fishing and she had a lot of purpose in it, you know, and like not everyone eats lobster or would appreciate what she's doing, but it doesn't matter because like that she's doing it with God yeah. and that's what made her happy. And so, yeah, like no matter what your function is, if you're, re- if you're called to do it, it's really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's valuable. Yeah, and I, I like that it's valuable for God, you know, so uh, if you're going to go into the other extreme that you're going to do it for glory or for fame or to, you know, become rich or anything, because, you know, for this lady, I think she had like a, a normal wage, you know, situation. She wasn't like super rich or something, but she was I mean, full we don't of know. Life. We, we don't know, but, you know, she was full of life, you know, and uh, she didn't do it for like, it, it was clear that she didn't do it, do it for the glory or fame or something, because, um that's where you know like the discipline kicks in if you have the discipline you'll go in you know every day no matter if somebody's watching you or not you know in truth you always serve god and you always wake up and go to work for god you know you you fulfill your function for god you know but um yeah i think that's also like really great to like touch upon is that uh, yeah, it's like, really easy to fulfill your function when you know somebody's looking at you and you're like oh yeah I'm fulfilling my function look at me but it's uh, even more so you know, when you know nobody's looking at you and you have to like keep persisting and keep pushing through it and you know um, yeah seeing the importance of what you do the value of what you do and keep giving your gift in that space mm-hmm. yeah and like naturally she attracted a situation where she could share that you know mm-hmm. like that it clearly wasn't her intention mm-hmm. but she did because she loved and so like that attracts you know love and so she was able to share that yeah the persistence and love she had for what she did and that's inspiring for everyone mm-hmm. so it's like when you're just doing what you're what you need to do and you're not doing it for like attention or validation like you'll naturally be uplifted you know like mm-hmm. god will want to share that with others and yeah it's nice you don't have to worry about that like you just do what you're called to do and love it fully yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i really love that because like when you are just working at something no matter how hard it may look for you at the beginning or what you're doing what your function may be if you keep at it you're going to become good at it you're going to learn as jose was saying earlier you know with like skills like in the church of Union, you're going to learn those skills but like as you keep going to doing like this you know the same thing the gonna do what you love there you're gonna become a 
professional let's say in that mm -hmm. and that's going to feel very good for you to actually know all these things like all the aspects of something and just mm -hmm. uh, be able to share that with others in a way that feels good but like that persistence is so important because if you don't stop yourself from doing something what stops you from becoming the best at it never give up never surrender <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> there was at some point some kind of like you know, never give up never surrender something like that. Okay. anyway <laughs> <laughs> do surrender to God. Yes, surrender to God. Don't give up. Surrender to God. <laughs> yes. Meme fixed. Okay. Meme fixed. Good. Yeah, but like uh, this is something that I really love because, like, if you think about in this world, like, what stops you from having like everything that you really want? It's just you keep quitting on yourself on some things. Being with your twin flame getting that thing that you want the house the everything yeah. doing everything that you desire it's just it's a matter of you persisting through through the resistance and yeah like moving even though it does even if it does feel bad sometimes still persisting through that even if you feel like giving up still persisting through that mm -hmm. and even if you feel like i know you you need to be right for some reason and everybody else is wrong. Keep persisting that and humble yourself. Mm -hmm. Empty your cup. Empty your cup. Okay. Yeah, and then you will totally overcome any challenge that way. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't believe that you're going to, as long as you never give up, you will. Yeah. And it, like, it makes you stronger and uh, brings success. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do feel complete with that one. I don't know if you guys have anything else or if we have any more comments. Um, Christina, love this discussion. Lisa said Galaxy Quest about the surrender thing to never give up. Uh. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But yeah, no other comments or questions. Mm -hmm. Any other words? Last thought. I feel complete. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Sandra? I'm, I'm complete. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for joining us in the after church tea time to discuss about joy and purpose. Uh, Paco and Deb gave a really, really beautiful sermon. You can watch it back mm -hmm. on the Church of Union YouTube channel. And that being said, thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye.